What's good? What's good, family? What's good? What's good? You hear me? What's good? What's good? What's good? You hear me? What's good, family? How everybody doing? You hear me? What's good? What's good with it? How everybody doing? How we doing? How we doing? What's good? I'm good, family. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. See, Moss Dad, what's good? Prosper with Regina. What's good? What's good? What's good? How everybody doing? Family, what's good with everybody? What's good? Man, it's good, man. We blessed, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How everybody doing here tonight, man? Do me a favor before we even get started, man. Let um everybody hit that paper plane down there. Send it out to a few people, man. Let them know we in the building. Let them know we getting started, man. Let them know we gonna vibe. Um, I won't, I won't, I won't talk. You hear me? I won't talk. I got some things to say. Um, we gonna talk about these stocks. We gonna talk about just a lot of few, a few things. I won't talk about wealth creation. Um, so I got a few things on my mind, man. Um. That we need to talk about, that we need to discuss, um, and I want, I want, I want to address some things tonight. I want to talk about that. So you know, let's tap in. Do me a favor, man. Y'all see the airplane, right? Shoot that out to like five people, ten people. Tell them travel live. We rocking. You know what I'm saying? So um, let's do that. How everybody feeling tonight? How everybody feeling tonight? Let's let's start there, right? How everybody feeling tonight? Oh, I ain't even see it was going. My bad. I ain't even see everybody was saying what's up. Trap jam. My bad. Um, appreciate the positivity. The merch looking spiffy. <laughs> Favorite grow stock, man. I don't know. What's up, homie? Paper playing. Yeah, yes, sir. Tell us the basis on stocks. I got a course on that called Welcome to the Trap. Doing well. Thanks for sure, Queen. We holding on for sure, for sure. Talk about Costco. Nope. Um, so I'm gonna be real with y'all. Like I'm gonna just tell y'all some real stuff. If you come on here to just ask me about stocks, you can leave. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even lying. I don't really even want. I don't want to tackle just that tonight. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna be real. If you just wanna ask me about certain stocks right now, you can leave. This ain't for you. I ain't gonna lie to you. This one, this one ain't gonna be for you. You hear me? Um, so I, I'm gonna I'm talk about some stocks. And I'm going to talk about a few things, um, but, you know, we won't, I won't talk, you know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes it's okay to give our brothers the game for free. It's okay. If you look at my page, how much game you want me to give you, family? I do Trapping Tuesdays. I do a bunch of lives. I do, I got a whole podcast. I got a page with over 600 posts on here. What more you want from me? You you want to squeeze blood out of a turnip, right? I get it. Um, um, so, you know, so it's a lot of stuff going on right now, right? And I ain't going to lie, y'all, like, for a minute, um, I had to step back for a minute. Um, I had to step back for a minute um, because... Emotionally, emotionally, I was in a in a space, um, and I ain't gonna really dig into that. Um, but I was emotionally in a certain space. Like I wanted to go live so many nights, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Queen. Save. I want to just come on here and talk about life. Yeah, that's what I want. To, I, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna talk about investing and stuff. Um, Cause you know that's what I do, and I know that's what people you know want to talk to me for. I understand that, and I'm I'm cool with that. We can do that, right? We can do that, and I'm gonna do that. That's my pr- that's my plan to do that. Um, but I want to talk about a few things that we need to do, right? So um, let's 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 start that. So do me a favor, do me a favor, man. Everybody in here, um, right? It just becomes murder pouring out though. Facts, fam. That's a fact. Um, 
do me a favor. Um, yeah, man, I'm more than stocks, man. Like, I be wanting people to understand that. Um, so, do me a favor, man. Y'all take that little paper plane, man, and send it out to as many people, man, as y'all want. Because um, we're going to talk, man. We're going to talk some real life stuff in here. Right? We're going to talk some real life stuff. We're going to get it. So, um, man, so I'm going to just be real with y'all. Like, so, oh, man, what's good, Queen? My daughter, mama came here, y'all. Like, I appreciate her so much. Y'all don't even know how much, like, we done been through together. And, like, she one of my favorite people, you hear me? For real, in the world. She one of my favorite people. So, you know, like, a lot of stuff been going on with us, man. So, um, I'm not going to lie. Like, me personally, is a lot I be wanting to talk about. But sometimes... It's better for us to be quiet so we can articulate ourselves better, right? We need to learn how to articulate ourselves, not always out of emotion, right? And so one of the things I will say that is right now we do need to understand the importance. Um, we need to understand the importance of building wealth, yo. I'm going to be real. Like, we need to understand how important it is for us to be building wealth. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm going to show you why it's important. Right? I'm going to tell you why I think. Oh, somebody said, do I think. Let me answer this right quick. Somebody said, do I think protesting is the wrong approach? So I actually think it's it's it has to happen. But I think there's this. This this area we're in right now is multi-led. Right? It's multi-led. Um, so what I want to say is, so everybody has, so one of the things I was thinking about is, um, everybody has a position in what we going through. Everybody has a position in what we going through and we got to understand our position and our role, right? But the, the core of where we're at right now is everybody needs to understand how important it is for us to be building wealth. Right. Like how important it is. Like we got to eradicate that idea of consumerism. Right. We got to eradicate. Like we got to. I mean, we got to get away of the consumerism mindset. We got to get that out of here. Right. Because I'm going to be real with you and we need to talk about this. Like. So I was doing just a lot of research and doing a lot of homework on, you know, what's taking place. And I was like, damn, let me let me. Like, how do I get in this? Right? How, how do I use my voice and how do I use my platform, you know what I'm saying, to inject something that needs to happen, right? Like, how do I get that? Because if we think about stocks, it's only a small portion of, you know, the conversations that need to be had. But what I do love about stocks is it's the easiest way for us to introduce ourselves to wealth. It's the easiest way for us to introduce ourselves to wealth. Right, because it's the easiest it's the easiest way for us to turn money into ownership in an instant. Right? It's the easiest way. It's the easiest way for us to transform money into ownership like that. And so what, what has to happen is we have to get we have to get into the idea of what it feels like to be ownership. To be owners and have ownership and how that ownership transfer into wealth. Right? We got to understand. We got to know that the consumerism keeps us where we are. So the dialogue that has been pushed, right, is to buy this, buy that. Think about it. Every time, if y'all been rocking with me for so long, right, y'all been rocking with me, people been, what y'all see me what every day? Right, Wall Street trap shirt, Wall Street trap hats, shirts. That's all I wear. Right, and so people be like, "You branding, you branding, you branding," and that's cool. But for me, it was a deeper level. It was I want to wear mine. Right, I want to wear what's mine. Right, I want to wear it, and then so now what happens is the same way. I'm gonna show you my mindset on it. Right, my mindset on it was the same way that Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Prada, and all them had. Right, it was if you see the logos on 
this person wearing this all the time, then at some point, this is going to represent something to you personally. No matter what I say it represent, it's going to represent something to you. And you're going to identify what this represents to whoever you see with it on. So this is why they put people who are in, you know, we look up to and people that we admire and people who... They put it on them A lot of time they getting it for free And so now we see them talking about certain things And now we've associated that brand And what they're ran with that level of success Right? So let, let's think about that Right? Listen to what I'm saying to y'all Right? So for me it was I wanted to wear my own shit Every day All day So it became my uniform And then what I wore Now represented me So now when people saw me every day And they always saw the wall street They're like Yo Like You know what this represent This represent trap And I know what trap represent So I won't be a part of that You feel me? Like that's what my mind was It wasn't about branding And none of that It was like Yo I want to wear my own stuff And so when people see me With my own stuff I want them to associate My brand And my word With me and then that's it. You feel me? So it's the same thing that they did. So now we got all our rappers and all that. And I don't got nothing against it. Everybody do their thing because I was in the streets. That's what I did, right? We associate fly shit. We associate cool. We associate success. We associate all these things with brands that we see our successful people wear. You feel me? Like even if it's even if it's uh indirectly or subconsciously. Right, we associate it with that. So I'm like, yo, I can take the same approach and just wear my own stuff every day. And now what happens is now that I represent something bigger. I'm gonna be real with y'all. I represent something bigger than what Louis Vuitton represent. I represent something bigger than what Gucci represent. I represent something big. I represent something bigger than that. I don't represent fashion. I represent the wealth creation of me and my family. That's what it's about for me. For me, everything I do is about. How do I change the dynamics of my family? And I'm telling y'all, that's my goal. My goal in everything I do in my life is why I can tell people all the time. Yo, it ain't about money for me. I don't care about money. Two things I care about. Freedom and changing the dynamics of my family. I do my best to help everybody in my family in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Because I want to be the one that says, I don't want always, much as I believe in prayer, I believe in it to my heart. But I, I don't always want to have to tell my people, man, pray on it. Right? Everybody who know me know I love God and I believe in God to the utmost, but I don't always want to have to tell my family, pray on it. I want to be able to say, here, let me help you. Let me do this. Right? And so that's a part of wealth creation. That's why money don't mean nothing to me. You feel what I'm saying? Money don't mean nothing to me. It's about how can I help my family? How can I introduce them to another type of freedom? How can I introduce them to wealth? Even if my method isn't always right, my intentions are good. So what I want y'all to understand is the wealth creation and the ownership factor is going to hit hard because everything is everything that takes us to the next level has to equate to ownership. It has to even down to me wearing a simple hat and a simple shirt every day. You see me with it on every day for the last two years. You feel me? That's how small it is to me. Now I got to buy 10, 15 shirts to wealth. If I don't, I feel like, damn, like. I don't got no more shirts. I got a brand new one right here. Fold it up. I, I found somebody out here. I said, yo, I need you to print me a shirt right quick. Here. Boom. Simple. It's something small. It's something so detailed. It's something so minute. You might not catch it. But for me, it means a lot. I need to walk around with Wall Street trapping stuff on every day, all day. Because it's mine. It's my brand. It's what I believe in. That's, that's the first part of wealth. We got to find something that we believe in. Right, we gotta get you introduced to it. So that's why I came, that's why stocks were so important to me. Because it was the first form of ownership that introduced me to wealth. Because we can have all the money we want. I'm gonna be real with you. That ain't wealth. You got money, yeah. But what happens when you die, you can't do nothing with that money if you haven't learned how to uh allocate those assets in different ways. So I did some research and I saw something, and it said that um it said that the the average white wealth is something like nine hundred and thirty thousand dollars, right? That was wealth for the average white family, nine hundred and like thirty thousand dollars, right? Nine hundred and thirty thousand dollars, like yo, okay, cool, I can see that. The average wealth for a black family was one hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars. Yo, listen to what I just told you. 
Now we talking about in the grand scheme. We talking about what wealth is. We talking about wealth. So wealth for the average white family was nine hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So roughly a million dollars almost, right? Wealth for the average black family was one hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars. People make that in the day. People make that in a year. How is this possible? <laughs> my daughter mom would say why well, I knew that Cause sure, for sure That's my girl man I fuck with her so much So we need to know that You hear that you, you, Did you hear the number though The average wealth for a white family We talking wealth here We ain't just talking about me We talking about just wealth This wealth right here Was $930,000 So almost a million dollars $70,000 from being a million dollars Cool the average wealth for black, and this was in 2020. This was March. This was a statistic for March 2020. For March 2020, the average wealth for a black family. Now we ain't talking about the average income. We talking about we took all the black wealthy people in the world. We call wealthy the average all up 138 thousand dollars family. I was working on a stadium. You know, I was making 130 thousand dollars a year before taxes. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. Something ain't right with that. I read another statistic that says $765 billion in gifts and inheritance will improve the wealth gap this year. This year. This is what I just said. $765 billion in gifts and inheritance will improve the wealth gap this year. The black family only represented 3% of that. That's a problem. That is a problem. I'm not a mathematician, but I need somebody to tell me it was 3% of $765 billion. You feel me? I need somebody to do the math on that because I ain't a mathematician. But if you're telling me $765 billion will be gifted and inherited to improve the wealth gap this year and black people only represented 3% of that, that is a problem. We have a problem, family. We have a problem. So while I totally understand that the protests and I understand, the, like I'm not even saying that the riots are wrong because I understand it from a bigger component but what I'm saying is the issue is multi-layered multi-layered you somebody said 22 million that was 22 million you said oh my god that's hard 23 million yeah 20 somebody saying 23 or 23 million that's bad from 765 billion dollars that's going to be gifted and inherited that's, that's you 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 understand what I'm saying so the issue the issue is deeper than just what we being what's being seen here So somebody, I, I appreciate that question, Queen. So you said, so what issue should we hit first? The issue should be first be how do we transition from consumers to owners? How do we introduce ourselves to financial literacy? So I'm going to be real with y'all. Like, I talked to a lot of people and I was like, yo, it's crazy because I have been talking to a few people. And I was like, yo, it's time for me to, to, um, it's time for me to, I didn't say that. I just asked the question. Found somebody said, "Really, do I'm saying I didn't. I asked. I told people I'm not a mathematician, so somebody put it in there. I was only reading the comment. I don't know, family. I said I ain't a mathematician, bro. Like, chill out, calm down. I was only reading the comment. Be cool, fam. It's all right. Even if it's 24 billion, cool. That's what's cool. That's okay too. Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. Still, if it's 765 billion and we only get three percent of that, and if it's 23 billion, that's still an issue." It's still an issue. It's still an issue. Calm down, family. Get, get them. Don't, don't do it. It ain't the time. It ain't the time. 
It's okay. It's okay. I promise it is. So what I want to what I want us to understand is what we need to do is so again I keep saying that it's multi layered, right? It's multi layered, right? It's multi layered. So what we gotta do is we gotta ask ourselves. We got to ask ourselves the question, what do we know about wealth? See, the problem is this. This is one of the problems that this is one of the problems that I had. And I'm not going to lie. Like when I first started getting into the game, when I first started understanding this, I really sat back. Like once I was reading the books, I really sat back and was like, damn, I don't know nothing about building wealth. All I know how to do is get money. It's two different things. It's two different things. All I know how to do is get money. Get, put me in a situation. I'm gonna I'm learn how to get money. Like I'm gonna get money. I'm gonna grind it out. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get money. But getting money don't have nothing to do with building wealth. And that's where we lose. See, nothing changes if we don't revitalize or re-strategize our approach. Renegotiate whatever read you want. We gotta change the approach. We gotta stop asking ourselves, how can I get a good job? We gotta stop asking ourselves, how much overtime can I work? We gotta stop asking ourselves, what's the new hustle? What's the new lick? We gotta start asking ourselves, what is wealth to me? How do I build wealth? How do I introduce myself and my family to wealth? See, somebody got to make the conscious decision. That's the thing about every wealthy family that we know of. The Bushes, the Clintons, the Rockefeller, the Rothschilds, whoever it is. Somebody made a conscious decision and said, yo, I'm about to end this. I'm about to end this. This is not about to happen right here. Somebody made that decision. Somebody. Reprogram. Facts, family. Somebody made the decision. Somebody says, you know what, yo, I might not see it all, but I'd be damned if my family name won't rock like this. And so for me, I was that person in my family. I was that person. I was like, nah, we got to change this. We got to change this. So what did I start doing? I started, I started investing. I learned the game. I kept learning. I kept being a student. I kept being a student of life. I kept being a learning machine. And then what I did, I started investing for my daughter. I started investing for my daughter. And then once that got right, I'm going to be real with y'all. My daughter, mama, I hope she don't feel no kind of way. I went to my daughter, mama, and I said, look, my love, how can I help you build this business that you have so that you can go to the next level? I said, we don't got to do it all at once. We don't got to try to, let's start coming up with ideas so that I can help you. I don't want you to worry about not having the money to do this and that. I want you to see your vision and let's put it on paper. Let's put it together and let me help you. So, because I know one thing, we don't, we don't have that. For, we, don't be having them, we don't be having what it take to go to the bank and ask them all the questions. Some of us are intimidated by going in the bank. Some of us are intimidated by going in the bank. Some of us are intimidated. I go in that thing and be like, yo, check this out. What we but some people are intimidated of that. Some people are intimidated of the credit card. Some people are intimidated of so many things. So if that's what's happening in my family, so I'm gonna go to my people. Ma, what you wanna do, ma? Explain to me what, what, what your vision is. What we what we doing? What, what what we doing? What you trying to do? What what's your goal? Come up with a plan. Let's work the plan. Let's work the plan. See, somebody got to take the initiative and say, yo, it ain't much about me. How do I help the people around me so we ain't got to keep going to them? That's what I'm trying to see. I want to see how I can help the people around me so I can be the one to say, yo, I can, I ain't, I, I might don't have whatever, but I got enough knowledge and I know a, enough about this game so I can help you. But we going to strategize. We going to go about this the right way. We ain't going to just throw money in a win. We're going to strategize. We're going to go at it the right way. How do we do that? And because I've built my brand, because I've built the business, because I've been successful at doing these things, I know enough to help you do that. I can help you get to this level. And then as I grow, I can be like, yo, come on. This is the way. This is the way. 
And I can go to my friends and be like, bro, look, I rock with you this way. We was in the street together. Look, come on. If we ran this pack, if we ran these blocks, if we ran these trap houses, look, I found a way. Look, this is what we do. This my partner, my big brother, Pocket, he got the trucks. I mean, my homies in the street. Like, look, check this out, fam. We're going to get into these stocks, and I'm we're going to link up with my big bro. I'm going to show you how to get a truck on the road. This is what we doing. This is what we doing. This has to be the way, yo. Because it's the saying, like I always say that. I done said it a million times, yo. Listen to what I'm about to tell y'all. If you allow them to feed you, you can't complain when they starve you. If you allow them to feed you, you can't complain when they starve you. You feel me? If you allow them to feed you, fam, you can't complain when they starve you. You can't complain. I'm in your house. I'm letting you put the food on my plate. So my objective was like, all right, cool. I'm going to feed my daughter. It's my goal. It's my, it's, it's my obligatory. Feel me? To feed, it's my obligatory purpose to feed my daughter. Nobody else. It's mine. So now she never got to go through this world saying, um, I, I got to go do this. I got No, you don't. Your daddy got you. It's mine. It's mine. So I'm asking y'all, we see what's going on in the world, yo. Everybody got a different role. Everybody got a different purpose. And I understand that. I, I understand it. Again, for the people that's protesting, man, I know, I know your pain. I feel you. For the black businesses that done got burned down, I understand your complaint too. But I need you to understand this though. It wasn't, there was something that led up to that. And I'm pretty sure people wasn't just saying it's a black owned business, I'm gonna burn that down. So I understand that, right? So they're using that on us, but I want, I want us to dig a little deeper. I want us to dig a little deep and say, yo, this ain't nothing but history keep on improving. This ain't nothing but history that keep on repeating itself. So if the history keep repeating itself, what has changed between when my ancestors and forefathers did it and between we doing it? What has changed in the, at the core, what has changed to keep this from happening again? You feel me? 100%. You feel me? So what has changed between the 70s and today at the core that has kept that's going to keep this from happening again? And I'm going to tell you, family, nothing. Because we still allowing them to feed us. So I'm going to just be real with you. How many times if you go to your mama house, if you eat in the house, you can't do nothing. Look, you don't make no you don't put no food in this house. You can't change no rules in here. You won't put no food in no house. You won't pay no bills in here. You can't do a damn thing in here. You're going to abide by the rules. So when you go in your mama house, you already your You know them rules ain't even designed to benefit you. So that's why you griping in that thing. Man, I ain't mind. I'm going to do this. And I, you know what they say? Get out the house then. Get out the house then if you don't like it. So we got to get out the house. We got to get out the house. How do you get out the house? Sometimes when you, you, know, you, you get out the house, you be like, I'm a... How many people, when we was young, right? Well, I can't say me because I was already out of the house, right? <laughs> At a young age. But what happens is, when you, you make up your mind, you won't get out of the house, you don't care what happened. You just like, man, I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm fed up. I'm done. The change's not going to come till we fed up. The change don't come till we fed up. The change don't come. When we don't want to leave the job because we're like, man, it's a good paying job, right? I'm going to be real with you. You limiting yourself. You cool with making fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. You limiting yourself because you could be making 50000 a day if you figure out the game. But as long as you focused on this game, as long as you plan under these rules, you will never get to the 50000 a day. You feel me? So the bigger goal here is how do we introduce ourselves to the next level? Wealth creation. Wealth creation. 
See, it's bigger than stocks. I'm not going to lie. It's about ownership. I'm going to go back. That's why I went in. It's ownership. So for me, the stocks was the introduction. Once I got into the game through the stocks, I'm going to tell you how great stocks is. I literally learned how to run a lot of aspects of my business from watching the stock market. I watched them put out a product. The product ain't bad. I watched them fix the product, rebrand the product. I watched them allocate money. I watched them promote. I watched them research and develop. I watched them advertise. I watched them get on CNBC and tell us about their business. It's no different than me coming on live telling y'all about my business. You feel me? The stock market was more than just me. And I, I went into it like, oh, I want to do this. And the more I did it, it was the more I learned about business. Here's the thing. Because the stock market represents 500, the S&P represents 500 of the best public companies in America. The S&P 500 represents 500 of the best companies in America. So who better to teach me how to play the game than the people from the 500 greatest companies. And then I flipped the script and told myself, okay, not only am I going to learn and gain from them, but I'm going to invest in their business and I'm going to make them work for me and I'm going to let them build my wealth. Let's say that again, right? Let's say that again. Let's understand that concept again. Not only am I going, and not only am I going to learn the game from them as I'm researching and studying their business, seeing how they grow in their business, seeing how they market their business, seeing how they brand in their business, seeing how they, you know, making other investments. But also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hard-earned money and I'm going to put my money into their business. Now I'm going to let them use my hard-earned money to build their business, but to build my wealth at the same time. So now they working for me. I don't care what you is. If I give you some money, you make that money grow for me. You working for me, man. Just take that for what it is. I don't care. You feel me? So that's what we need to learn. That's, that's, that's where I'm at with it. Over time, the economy and the population will grow. Over time. Listen, the economy ain't stopped growing in the 60s. It ain't stopped growing in the 70s. It ain't stopped growing in the 80s. It ain't stopped growing in the 90s. It didn't stop growing in 2000. It ain't stopped growing in 2010. And it ain't going to stop growing. So why not put my money in them same businesses that are going to keep growing? Why not? And let my money grow for me. The bank ain't giving you but 0.01%. The bank giving you 0.01%. So why not at least get 6, 7, 8, 9, 10%? By putting it in the stock market. At that point, they month they growing our money rapidly for me. And if you do your homework, you do your research, you do like me, you buy 22 shares of Chipotle, and in eight weeks it done went from this to that. You up 19, 20 thousand dollars in a matter of eight weeks. Well, we did that. That's more. That's they up, I'm up 75% since the time I put it in there. It's gonna take you 200 years to get that 75% return of your money in the bank. At 0.01%. Understand what I just told you. I just made a post today where I told you I bought 30 shares of Lululemon at 189. The stock is three, it closed at $310 a day. That's easy. You get 7, 8, 9% on average. You go to getting 30, 40, 50% once you do another thing. So the, the, the thing about the stock market is what we learn how to do is we, we learn how to find opportunities, right? We learn how to find these opportunities. See, we're not trying to predict the market. Like we never trying to predict the market. The stock market is unpredictable, but it is designed to make us money. And all we just got to find to do is we got to learn how to find value. Once we learn how to find value, we then get the upper hand in this game. Some people say you so I see I see King say you gotta have money set aside for emergencies. Bro, every day of my life been an emergency. See, that's the mind. I'm gonna be real with y'all, bro. Let me tell y'all something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me tell people this. Let me tell people this. Right? So check this out. Let me, let me, let me, let me. I, I want people to understand this logic right here, right? So people always say, man, you gotta have six to eight months. Right, Jada Trader, I see you, family. I saw you hit me today, man. I had a lot going on, King. I saw you hit me today in the DM with that. I wanted to repost it too. I had a lot going on today. Um, but so I'm, I'm gonna say this to people, and I want people to understand this. This is real talk, like right. So people always say, 
you need to have six to eight months, you know, worth of money put up. Right? People always say that. I disagree with that. I'm going to be real with you, man. I, I disagree with that. When people live in check to check, do you know how hard it is for somebody to have six to eight months worth of bills paid, a worth of things put up? You know how hard that is? People barely eating. They one check away from. I know people who are one check away from homelessness and they trying to give it all they got. Sometimes you got to go against what everybody. I'm going to be real with y'all, man. This and I use my daughter mama. I don't know if she's still in here, but I remember I was I was I was my daughter mama never put me on child support. Right? Never. And from the day my daughter was born, I, she told me one thing. She said I asked her one day, I said, won't you, I said, if she needs something, let me know what she needs. She said, no, nah, I'll never do that. I said, what you talking about? She said, don't you need socks? Don't you need drawers? Don't you need t-shirts? Don't you need that? You know when you need something, right? I'm like, yeah, she's like, well, your daughter is a couple weeks old. She gonna need that for the rest of her life. So I ain't gotta never tell you what she need. Just when you think about you need it, know that she need it. From that moment on, I've never stopped doing for my daughter. I was sitting up, you know what I'm saying, all the time. So she never put me on child support. When I quit my job, I called my daughter, mom, and I said, check this out, my love. I said, look, I'm going I'm to pay, pay for her school, but I ain't going to really have it to do as much as I was doing because I'm about to go all in on myself. She said, all right, cool. I believe in you. Do your thing. Go with it. I ain't have all that put up. I ain't have all that put up. But I believed in the vision. I believed in what I wanted to do. I was locked in. This is what I'm doing. And the only person I owed the explanation to was my daughter and my daughter's mother. Because those were the two people who were, you know, depending on me in a way. So I went to her and I told her, I said, look, I'll still pay for school. But give me a, give me a little minute. Give me a little minute. I'm not going to be able to do all the other stuff that we've been doing. She was like, no, nah, it's cool. I believe in you handle your business. You feel me? This ain't no six to eight months worth all that putting up. I believed in the vision. And did things go wrong? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, they went wrong. Hell yeah, they went wrong. But that ain't stopped me. That ain't stopped me. When I moved to the A, I had a friend of mine moved out here with $700 to her name. Right now, she making six figures a month. Without putting her business out there. She moved out here when I moved out here. Maybe a couple months before me. She moved out here with $700 her And we both from the city. I said, now nah, you real out here? We used to rock with each other all the time. She would get discouraged. I would be like, man, you got to keep going. She making six figures a month right now. So I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe you got to have. Because this is the thing. Our whole life been an emergency. When have our life not been a mercy? When have our life have when haven't our life been an emergency? But here's the thing that I know about us: we so resilient, even at rock bottom, we find a way to come out on top. You looking for a safety net in life, bro? Stop looking for that safety net. Stop looking for that. Be willing to go all in. My guy said, "Hustler, hope not a pipe dream." Fact, Jay. You know what I'm saying? And when they speak of success, I'm what they might be. <laughs> I know the line all too well, King. Okay? So we gotta stop, we gotta stop depending on that. We gotta stop always looking for the safety. We gotta stop trying to always cross our T's and dot all our I's. We gotta stop trying to always have a complete sentence. We gotta stop always trying to have the ducks in a row. I'm telling you, when I started this company, when I started my brand from the Travel Wall Street, I didn't have it all put together. All I had was two ebooks. One was $10, one was $12. Now we got a whole university, Trapper University, and we own the name. That's my name. Which in a few years, I'm going to have a building called the Trapper University. We own that. So, nah, you, you don't got to have that. Right? 
<laughs> I didn't even know what a safety net is until you just that's a fact. That's a fact. For so long, we've been playing defense. That's what that six to six months worth of saving is. Three to, that's defense. Three to six months worth of saving. Nine months worth of saving. One, that's defense. I remember I was young, we used to play this game called pitch up tackle. That's all offense. Throw it up in the air, grab it. All offense. How long are we going to play defense? So this is something I like to say all the time, too. They always say defense, offense win games, but defense win championships. But let me say this. Let me say this. Great defenses turn into offense. If the defender run, if the offense got the ball and the quarterback throw it, the defender intercepted. it. Once the defender intercepts it, two things can happen. If he gets tackled, the offense get the ball. The offense score a touchdown. If the defender catches it and runs it, as soon as he catches it, he's no longer on defense. He's on, he's, he's on offense because now the offense turns the defense and the offense has to now tackle him. If the offense running back running the ball, he hit a receiver. I mean, the running back running the ball, the linebacker hit him, boom. He picked, he up the ball. The cornerback scooped that up. The cornerback now turns into a, a running back. He on offense now. The offense turns, the defense turns into offense. So you need to get on offense to win this game. We've been playing defense too long. We've been playing defense too long, family. It's time to play offense. Put some more plays in the playbook outside of going to work. <laughs> Two easy points. That's a fact. Right? To attain freedom is a constant struggle, people. It's a constant struggle. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I want I, I want look I want us to look at this. If we've went through all of this and the next generation behind us gotta do the same thing. I'm about to say something that hurt, yo. We failed them as leaders. We failed them as the predecessors. We failed them. Because we've given them, they're supposed to be our successors. We've given them nothing to walk and to succeed at. I'm, I'm just, I mean, I know, I know it's tough. It's going to hurt some people. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's all right. Because I looked at myself and said the same thing. If my daughter got to go through some of the same shit that I done been through, if I ain't give her no privilege, if I ain't give her no opportunity, I've been here 38 years old. By the time I die or whatever, and, and I, ain't, I ain't changed, I ain't make the path a little bit easier for her, I failed her. 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 100% I failed her. And if we don't feel like that, that's an issue. That's an issue. I was about to say that. It's okay for the pain to hit. It's okay for the pain to resonate. It's all right. Because through the pain comes the growth. You know what Betty Wright said? After the pain. You hear me? You feel me? The pain gonna hurt. But we gotta use the pain not to just go burn this bitch down. We gotta use the pain and say, all right, let's go to the drawing board. Let's go to the drawing, because we ain't about to do this again. You feel me? Because we ain't about to do this again. We ain't about to do this again. So here's the thing. So check this out. Somebody just said something to me and it, and it made me think about this. It made me think about this. So for a long time, you had whites and blacks, right? So we always knew, you know, so they had blacks as second, you know, this, we were the number two, you know, major minority or whatever the case may be. And then you had Hispanics and then you had Asians and all them came. And then this is what happened. This is what happened within that time span. In that time span, I'm going to be real with y'all. Asians, 
surpassed us in the world game. Asians surpassed us in the game of wealth. Now, of course, we know everything. We know how I go. But here's the thing. Then the Indians, the Patel family came over here. They came over here in the 50s. The Patels, they came over here in the 50s. In the 50s. And they own 70% of all hotels that we go to. They came over here in the 50s. Our people came over in the 1800s or something. The 1600s. You see what they said? Age and six together. That is our problem. So now what has to happen? Now what has to happen? Again, if we watching the game be played, we can either do one or two things. We can complain about the game or we can get in the game. We ain't necessarily got to beat them or compete with them at the game. We just got to play the same game they playing. See, we the only ones not playing a game. That's the bigger picture. We the ones, we the only ones not playing a game. You feel me? We the ones, so it was whites and then it was Asian. I mean, it was whites and it was blacks, right? Boom. So, I don't want to say it like we should be number two or whatever like that, but we should be able to, okay, this was going on, boom. Let's let's get in the, let's, it's, it's a lot of us over here. They over here too. Boom, this the game they playing, cool. We know the, we know the chip stacked against us, cool, but let's play the game. If we're going to play the game, let's play the game then, Cool. Y'all doing that? We doing that. Cool. And we know they burned a lot. You know, they, they destroyed a lot of us because they didn't want us on top. We understand that. We understand that. But we ain't supposed to quit. So now you got the Asians. You got the Patel fam. You got Mexican, Spanish, Latin America. They coming here. And how do they pass us up? Because everybody's studying the game but us. You got people coming from way over other countries coming over here saying, yo, I want to come to America. Right? So we know we got to put it together. We got to pivot. We got to stop complaining that the game is rigged. Even the move I liked in the bank, he said, man, even the rigged game is exciting to play. Right? So, okay, we know the game rigged. That's what make it even more better to play. That means, okay, if the, if the game is rigged, then we get our wealth in numbers. But this is what they do. They, throw the, they take the people who we admire and they make them make us consumers. They take the people who we admire, the people we look up to, and they put them in a position to make us consumers. So now instead of us trying to build wealth, we trying to be fly ass consumers. Man, one of the things that really changed my perspective on Hispanic people was this. I remember working at the stadium in Atlanta, where I'm at right now. I was building that stadium. And so I got me an apartment my apartment was like $1,100 a month, right? My apartment was like $1,100 a month. So I was like, all right, do me a favor, y'all. Y'all see that plane, that paper plane down there? Do me a favor, man. Send it out to like 10 people, man. Let them know, man. We trapping right now, man. We got time, too. We got time. We got like another 20 minutes in this thing, man. Send that out to 10, 12 people, man. Let them know we in here right now. Feel me? Let them know. So I remember... My, my shit was like $1,100 a month, right? And I'm like, yeah, man, I got me a crib. So I tell my partner I'm working with, his name Freddie. I'm like, Freddie, man, you know, I got these apartments there in Marietta. Like, they cool, they live, they nice. He's like, all right, cool. He get the apartment. They got a three-bedroom. I had a two-bedroom. I was just in that thing by myself. I just need space, right? I don't like being cooped up. Man, it was six of them in there. It was six of them in that three-bedroom. Now, here's the thing. We was making two thousand dollars a month. Their rent, my rent was eleven hundred. Their rent was fifteen hundred. Right? This what they would do. One is six of them in there, so that one of them would pay the rent every month. One of them would pay the rent every month. Mind you, we making between eighteen and twenty five hundred dollars a week. If one of them paying all the bills every month, so they rent fifteen hundred. And you take in, by the time everybody take, you know, the light bill, the kid, let's say they're paying $2,000 a month. Let's say they're paying $2,000 a month. We're getting between eighteen dollars and $2,500 a week. 
So one check covered all the bills for the month and you probably had a couple hundred dollars. But all everybody else putting the food in the house. So you pay the bills. That's a wrap. So now by the time you pay the bills again, you done had five months to stack everything. And they were sending it straight to their people. I say, Lord. When I saw that, I said, yo, that's why they got us beat. Ain't nobody complaining. Ain't nobody saying, nah, man, I want my own space. Nah, I can't. Them boys were chilling. Them boys were going to the job, cool out, you know, whatever. They come to the house. I was like, damn. Nothing fancy in the house. Everybody on blow up matches. I say, Lord. That blew my mind. That I had a whole new respect for them after that. Think about that. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that. You got six or seven people in a three bedroom. Three bedroom, two bad. Everybody making twenty five hundred a month. Let's say we let's say we just gonna say two thousand dollars. So what? Two times seven, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. So we got fourteen thousand dollars coming to this house every week. Fourteen thousand dollars coming to this house every week. Then, when the rent came. It's my month to pay the rent. So but between rent and bills and everything, let's say I paid $2,000. Let's say I took my whole check and just put it on a bent and reels and everything else. But I ain't got to buy no food because everybody ain't here buying food. I don't really need no money till next week anyway. So now I got another five months to stack every check. You feel me? This is what we got to do. When we look in all our neighborhoods, who we see? Asians, Arabs, Chinese. They come in our hood, they set up shop. And they do group economics. I get the store. I, you come work for me for one, two years. I teach you how to run a store and then we help you get a store. You get a store, you bring two more of our people to, you bring two more people in the family over there, you teach them how to run a store the same way I showed you how to run a store. I give you all my connects. We now got the connect. We get a store. We're going to go to the next hood and do the same thing. You know what our problem is? Man, I don't want to give you my connect, man. You tripping. Or you want to try to be the middle man and make the money off the man. You want to try to be the middle man, raise the price up to make the money off your people. What you doing? Get a man to connect. Put everybody on. We got to change the game. Nobody else ain't going to change it for us, fam. So now I ain't want to just talk about stocks tonight. Because I've been had a lot on my chest the last couple of days. I've been wanting to talk about it, but I didn't know what to say. I'm like, man. I'm like, man, like, because I felt some kind of way. I felt some kind of way. You feel me? So I, I and I know I'm gonna talk about stocks a lot, but I, my 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 brand is now about to open up a little more. We about to open it up a little more, yo, because we need this. The world hurting, we hurting, we all emotional, and it's okay. But we need to let that pain let us come out on the back, and that it's stronger than we was before. We gotta come out of this, man. Now we getting the feel. Now we realize what our people went through. They just ain't brought the hose pipes out yet. Other dogs. But we know the pain emotionally, mentally, spiritually. This is what our people felt. This is what they felt. This is exactly what they felt. How we feel. This is how we felt. Imagine waking up one day and you see a man hanging from a tree that you really knew. This is how they felt. The same way we felt when we saw that man on that grind. A grown, this is what touched my heart. A grown ass man crying for his mama. You know how much, you know how scared you got to be for a grown ass man to call for his mama. Come on. We feeling the same pain our people felt. We, we feeling it. We seeing it. We feeling it, we sin. This is how our people felt. So this what made them say, we got to come out on the backside. We got to come out. We going to fight to this shit. So we fight them with our money. We become economically strong. We become that tribe, yo. We take the, we, and I, I used this analogy on the, on the thing the other day. I said, you take a fire. The 
only way to survive, I was talking to Rashad from Earning Legion, shout out my brother. I say the only way a fire can survive is if it have oxygen in it. You take the oxygen away from the fire, it can no longer survive. You take the oxygen from the fire, it no longer survives. All of these businesses in America have been surviving off of our oxygen, our money. We take our money from them and we breathe life into each other, man. We breathe life into each other. That's what I'm saying, man. That money is the oxygen. We take that oxygen from them and we put that oxygen in ourselves, man. We put that in ourselves. We stop saying, oh, my brother stole. His price is a little higher. I'm going to go over here. His price has got to be higher because he can't compete with them. So pay him a little extra. It's cool. It ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to hurt you to pay him an extra $2. It ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to hurt you, fam. The bread costs a dollar twenty-five over here. Your brother got to set up for two fifty dollars because he can't compete with them. Go ahead on and give him the two fifty, dollars fam. It ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to hurt you. He can't compete with Walmart. He can't compete with Target. He can't compete with such and such and such and such. He ain't got the connection they got. Go on, pay him a little 250 fam. It ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to kill you. You're going to waste it anyway. I'm challenging us, man. It's time. Everybody got different levels they got to play for this wall. Everybody got a different role. Everybody ain't going to get on the front line. That's cool. Everybody got a different role. So my role is just everything I know about finance and economy. And I got to learn more because I'm going to use my platform to do that, man. That's my pledge. That's my goal, man. I ain't lying. That's what I'm pushing. I'm pushing that. I'm pushing that. Everybody ain't gonna get on the front line. That's cool for the people on the front line that's rocking. If you need me, I'm, I'm rocking with you. I'm there. I'm cool. I'm a ride. This is what we doing. But I promise you, yo, that's only one component. Because we ain't gonna protest forever. We ain't gonna riot forever. Even a watch riot that lasted three years, it ain't last forever. So after that side of it, how do we still say, oh, y'all still ain't feel us yet? Financially, that's how we tell them. Financially, we say, well, y'all ain't felt us yet. I'm telling you that the same way they got people living check to check, they got some of these vote. They, the, the pandemic shows you they was only out of business for two months and 30 businesses went bankrupt. A whole slew of businesses that was paying dividends cut their dividends. You know why? Because that dollar, that oxygen that you was pumping into that business every day, they didn't know when you was coming back. And they couldn't survive without your oxygen. I tell you, you take the fire, you take the oxygen out of fire, the fire you're going to die. You take your money out of that business who lives on your money, who going to keep making products because he know you're going to keep spending. He going to keep making products because he know you're a consumer. Once they say no, you, they can't, everybody punished. Can't nobody be consumer. Oh, no, you got to open this thing back up. We tired of being locked down. Open this thing back up. And they open up the places where we spend our money at first. That's all I'm saying, family. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And them same businesses, them same Fortune 500 businesses got billions of dollars of loans and shit while people like us, like you, you, your credit score is, yo, you can't get a loan, your credit score bad, but these people operating off an empty tank and you giving them billions of dollars? Come on, fam, because they saying, look, we're going to give you this money because they are consumers. We're going to get them back in the building. So we got to say, nah, you took that debt, you die on that debt. I'm going to support my brother. I'm going to support my sister. That's what we got to be at, family. That's the change. That's the change we got to make. That's the change that needs to happen for us, family. So I hope some people got something out of this tonight, man. I just had a few things on my heart, man. I wanted to talk to us about it, man. I wanted us to feel it. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it wasn't really about stocks like that. It was something bigger than that. Right? They got bills and they trying to give you 1200 Come on, man. So, I only got a minute left, man. I just want to tell y'all, I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. I'm telling y'all, I love y'all. I love us. I'm with us. I'm rocking with us. Feel me? I love us. I'm with us. I'm rocking with us, family. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get through this. 
we're going to get through this. We all hurting. We all mentally exhausted. We all emotionally exhausted. But it's all right, man. We're going to get through this. We just got to come together. We got to learn. We got to learn. Justice for us. That's right, man. So I'm gone, man. I love you. I appreciate y'all, man. Good night. Be blessed. Be safe. Say your prayers, man. Tell somebody you love them, man. I'm gone.